So um, my talk today uh, will be about AI in academia. It's, it's a kind of a generic uh, talk. Uh, I'll be talking about technology that already existed and we can uh, utilize it in the right way in education. So I'm sure when I when when you read the title and you say, okay, some guy are gonna talk about AI in, in, in academia, you think of a robot replacing us teaching in class, right? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not really uh, a big fan of, of this idea and I know uh, how far uh, we have to go before uh, a robot can actually uh, teach in our behalf. But there are few facts and we have to uh, understand them very well and we have to um, uh, take them in consideration. And the first thing is, well, it's already, uh, AI is already recognized uh, wor worldwide in many applications. And 47%, let's say, of the learning management tools today, they will incorporate sort of AI capabilities in their uh, systems. This is in the next three years, you expect to see many educational related uh, 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 management systems that use AI. Why? Because we recognize how powerful it is. And we cannot deny now, uh, there are already uh, systems in place that utilize AI in, in, in teaching and learning. And also, uh, this process is speeded up because of the COVID-19. We all forced to do things that we were not expecting ourselves to do. Nobody was expecting to teach online all the way, uh, and nobody was expecting even to examine the students uh, just, uh, you know, online and talking to the talking screen, to the screen and, and, uh, and all that. So, but after this experience, I, I have to admit, all of us were not convinced, uh, including myself. And we find like, we, we feel like there is something uh, missing in the process. But now, 86% of educators, particularly in the U.S., say technology should be a core part of education. Why? Because they realize there is a huge amount of benefits uh, that we can actually gain and could speed up our educational uh, process. There are many things we can do. In this uh, uh, presentation today, I will explore uh, some of these uh, uh, technologies and how it can help us. Why we're doing this? Because the academic process is becoming more and more uh, demanding than ever before. And we have to, you know, I'm part of this and, 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 and I can feel the pressure and the time consuming. And this is all happening because of the emphasis on teaching uh, effectiveness and quality assurance. So we have to do a lot of work out of class. And somebody may be wondering, it's not about a, a robot replacing me to teach, but if, I, if AI can help me to handle all that part of the uh, uh, teaching process, I'll be very happy. So if we look at just you know, a simple illustration here of the teaching uh, of the uh, learning process. And, and I'm sure you know this better than I do. We do a lot of things on, uh, uh, out of class, planning courses, uh, uh, teaching styles and things like that. And then we do the teaching and learning, right? And then we have to evaluate the students. And then we, we do the uh, uh, course evaluation and we can uh, improve or, 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 or uh, you know, uh, closing the loop in some of the um, uh, you know, you could say improvements that we need to add to the course. So I'll be talking here about, first of all, uh, classroom activities that uh, we believe AI can help uh, a lot in this. Second, uh, textbooks. Third will be the student's performance, how we evaluate student performance. And then class, uh, uh, sorry, course uh, assessment. Apart from the textbook, but the rest are, are really time consuming and we spend a lot of time doing this. We start uh, uh, looking at some alternatives on some of the, as I mentioned, is, we're not talking about something will happen in, in 20 years from now, but we're, we're referring to, to technology existed could be used in the right context. In this case in the educational setting. So let's start by, by a simple example here and a simple technology that familiar to uh, most of you. This is a typical classroom. We look at, you know, a simple way of taking attendance of the students without you being involved. I don't know about you, but for me, uh, taking attendance takes much of my time. You know, if you choose to do it during class, 
then it takes, I don't know, uh, 10, 20 minutes, depends on how uh, big is your class. And doing it online, you don't know even the students behind this, the, the screen are actually existed or not. And also, if you choose to do it after class, like I teach classes with more than 40 students this semester, and you find it very hard, you, you know, you download that Excel sheet, and then you need to uh, map it to your list and see who's missing. Then you go and search for those missing students in e-service to enter, uh, to, to uh, mark them as absent. So this is 20 minutes for each and every class you teach. You can do the math now for, for the whole semester, how many hours you can actually utilize as something else. So using, using a simple technology here, which is a computer vision, you can simply just don't do anything and a system record the attendance. By the way, not necessary to be physically uh, in class, but you can be even uh, wherever you are uh, and the attendance could be taken, right? So this is one of the technology that already in some uh, uh, places started to uh, be used. And since we can actually read uh, faces. Then researchers, of course, uh, uh, went uh, more uh, to look at facial expression, and there are technologies already existed for this. So you can determine uh, students how serious they are, how, the level of their concentration, uh, whether they are blank or whether they are uh, sad or any kind of uh, emotion that you would like to detect. We're not saying here that each and every technology you need to pay attention to and make sure that you, you look into this. But in some situation, if, if I'm recording all these facts and, and these uh, data and will be analyzed, it will help you in certain uh, uh, extreme uh, cases. Let's say students uh, feeling something unusual or uh, students is not just not doing well and you want to see the level of concentration of the students or anything like that, then this technology will become uh, very handy. So a typical class, again, like this. So easily you can monitor a student's uh, behaviors and a student's, um, uh, you know, uh, activities in class. Here we can identify, for example, a student's trying to, to look at other students' uh, book. This is maybe uh, a group discussion, but in, it, this is, could be used for, uh, for exams or for quizzes or for simply assignments that you need the student individually uh, to, uh, to answer questions or, or solve a problem. So uh, we use this for exams as well. Nowadays in Blackboard, whether students are actually focusing or start to look left and right. <clears throat> also, who's paying attention or not? It's easy to determine that. And, uh, and all these statistics and anal analytics could be at the side whenever you need it uh, to, uh, to look at the student's uh, performance. <laughs> this is another extreme case. Uh, you can uh, know whether the student is actually really paying attention or not. If the students come and, and complain about grades and he's sleeping half of the uh, classes, then uh, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, this technology is already used in, in, in China, uh, particularly in high schools, because they don't only look at student uh, uh, you know, emotion, but they look at students' activities. And, and, and the schools make sense because you need to look at the student behavior and, and activities in class. That's very important. So uh, this is can be utilized in the right way. And in fact, before the pandemic, uh, uh, we had a project like this with Huawei, and we set a classroom uh, for experimenting things like this because they have the technology. And uh, we had the ideas that time. And uh, uh, in fact, even the, the, the solution uh, using AI, we had the solutions. And we deployed these solutions in a, in, in a, uh, in a classroom in their facilities here in Dubai. The only thing the, the project got slowed down after the, uh, the pandemic, and we're gonna go back and revisit the, uh, the project again and add more functionalities, Be because we have uh, a roadmap on adding more and more to this. Another uh, activity here is, which is very important uh, uh, activity, is the personalized learning. You know, personalization is, I know you know this better than me, is uh, becoming more important uh, in education. And we know how important it is. But we cannot do anything about it. You know, uh, I know there are some uh, individual uh, efforts to look at the students and try to identify good students and give them uh, more challenges and, and identify even weak students and 
you give them some time to, to catch up and all that. But the only thing is, we, I'm sure all of us uh, believe in, in personalized learning, and we know it's important, but it's, it's simply unfeasible to do it to the level, uh, to the satisfactory level. Why? Because if I would like to focus on a bunch of students here, a bunch of students there, and give them extra work here, and, and focus on this to catch up and all that, if you think of it, this is, this is time consuming and impossible to do it for all the students. I cannot even do it for, for my one section, which is more than for the students. So here, AI will come handy. Why? Because this is all about grouping students based on uh, similar uh, activities and similar performance. This is actually the core of AI, which is uh, the machine learning and, and in particular clustering here. And also uh, things like uh, recommendation. Because if you identify a student, whether this student need more work or student need more challenges, uh, in all cases, you need to recommend some extra work. And this is where the AI can help in this. And by the way, we're, we're talking about all these ideas in, in, in a high level because of interest of the time. But if you would like to go technical and know how this is done, I'm, I'll be very happy if you pay me a visit here in our lab. And we can uh, uh, discuss about this, and some of the technologies could be even, uh, you know, explored. Another thing is tutoring. In some cases, you you know that you need to do extra work with some students, but we simply cannot do that for uh, the commitments and, and the number of sections and the number of teaching hours we commit to. It's very difficult uh, to do this. So again, a recommended um, uh, tutorial for for, part, for, for a particular student, AI could help in that. Could actually even you know, zoom in to the topic that could be appropriate for, for, for the students. And this is, will be a great help for, for, uh, for, for the students without taking much of our time as educators. After all, all this knowledge that you're going to put in the system is, comes from the educators in the first place. Only thing you, you, you just, we cannot scale up. And that's the problem that uh, makes us, uh, uh, you know, uh, require more technology uh, system. Another thing is quick responses. And this is, you know, uh, very important because there is nothing frustrating like asking a student asking a question and get the answer after three, four days, or maybe not at all. Or let's say in classroom, student uh, uh, asks a question, uh, you cannot take uh, uh, more than let's say two three questions in in a in a in a class, or if you have forty students and all of them have a question or a concern, some some of them maybe even feel shy to ask questions uh, to their fellow students. So there is a technology existed here. You, I'm sure you heard of the uh, um, the chatbot using AI, and proved to be very powerful and used by many companies. You, now you call a company and, and actually a chatbot reply to you and, 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 and give you an answer. It's not reaching the level uh, that, uh, uh, you know, a satisfactory level that what the human does. But it's still, in certain cases, it could be straightforward answers for the students and that could cut a lot of, uh, um, you know, attention from educators and they, so they can focus on the things which is matters the most. There are many things. Uh, like this, that could be done. And um, students will be happy to have a question, it could be a text question, so it could be even a voice question, and they get answers. And of course, uh, you know, if you would like to put 24-7 access to learning uh, activities and, and, and learning materials, of course, AI help in that. Again, a recommendation system would work very well, but uh, selecting the right time, the right students, um, uh, the right means of uh, delivering uh, the materials. That's, that's what AI is all about. So these are very important four uh, items, in my opinion, that could speed up the process and improve the student's uh, productivity. Another thing is, some of you might find it silly, but the technology existed and it could be done. Let's say I'm, I'm teaching a course uh, or I'm giving you a seminar like the way we do now. And I can be talking in my office here, and in your end, you can receive uh, my talk in native language English. 
you know, I'm not a native speaker, but somebody else, uh, uh, you know, I could use this technology to hear my voice like somebody else. And in fact, correcting all the grammatical errors and, and, and whatever it is, and replacing, uh, for example, sentence if it's not appropriate and all that. The technology existed. And in fact, we started to test this using uh, uh, advanced uh, neural network and advanced uh, deep learning here in particular. This is uh, a technology we call it GAN, or Generative Adversarial Network. It's very important to use a technology like this, and, and I'm sure some of you noticed this when you see um, a, a video of, let's say, Obama delivering speech. And, and actually, it's, uh, they just use this technology, not only for uh, uh, the video, but even for the voice. I can teach the course using, let's say, Dr. Najmadin's voice, because maybe he's more, you know, student like the way he teaches, more, uh, you know, relaxed. And, and I want my voice to be the same. So it sounds silly, but in certain conditions, it could be very important, especially if you're uh, delivering a course for micro credential or for, um, uh, um, you know, a course open to everyone and you want it to be really accurate. So some technology like this could be uh, very handy. Not only that, I can uh, just write a text or a script and then the whole thing will be taken, uh, taken care of by the technology and the whole course will be delivered. And I'm, no, I'm sure that some of you involved in, in micro-credential uh, uh, courses to de deliver some, and, and uh, all these technologies will make the course even better. But even textbooks. So we already moved in most of the cases, although I'm, I'm really a big fan of, of uh, physical book, but we move to uh, electronic books. And now electronic books has the capabilities of looking at um, uh, you know, the level of the student engagement with the, uh, with the material, um, how long they stayed in the page, and, and uh, the level of their concentration and things like that, um, uh, how many pages they cover, how many students per page, and all that kind of analysis. And you can see something like this already uh, used by Blackboard. It's not to the you know, uh, to the level that uh, really, uh, you know, making huge sense, but it is, it's, it's existed. And in some cases, it's very helpful if you'd like to see how the students are doing and whether they're using your textbook or, or maybe simply the textbook is not good enough. Why? Because we find the students spending much time, but they are not doing well in exams. So there is something wrong in here. Or the students are not, you know, looking at the book at all. There is another. Uh, problem here to be addressed. And there is no way you know this unless you have sort of analytics uh, the way we can see it here. Oh, yes, so there are a few things in uh, uh, that we can do here. We circle back again because I feel it's really important the personalization here. You know, the textbook should be personalized as well. And, and um, you know, uh, for some students, basic or, or, or some of the topics they already know it and they don't want to see it. They want to see even more advanced topics. Some students, maybe even for this book, they feel they're lost and they need to uh, go back again to the, um, uh, the basic concepts and need it to be clarified and, and simplified. So the materials should be also, you know, uh, readjusted based on the student's uh, ability to learn or a student ability, uh, you know, uh, to understand what's the material all about. So, also, I would like to do some narrative or summarization of some courses to focus on. The book should be able to do this because the technology of, uh, uh, you know, you can have a, uh, a big article and you want to automatically get a narrative. The technology existed. But we don't use it often in, in educational uh, uh, system. Here. And it's possible to be adopted here. Not only this, for um, uh, students just joining the universities and the parents are concerned about their level of engagement and, 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 and the level of, uh, uh, or, or the performance in, in classes. Parents could be updated from the book directly by how often uh, the, the statistics we talk about it, and we can have even some uh, basic assessment where student has to pass this, uh, this assessment before uh, going to the next topic and so forth. And these results could be accumulated, analyzed, and could be even shared by parents. This is directly from the book. 
So the book is doing a lot of work that the educators can actually do, and that will, will lift a huge amount of, of uh, responsibility from our uh, shoulders. So this is what you're uh, referring to, Dr. Nuin Medin. Yes, now there are, there, there are a lot of things we can get out of the eye contact. Not only, um, um, you know, how long you've been staring on the book, can determine the level of concentration as well. And um, this technology already existed. It started to be used in, in fancy new cars like BMW and Mercedes and so forth. They, used to, uh, they use this technology now to determine whether you are actually focusing on food or not or about to sleep or, or, or even you sleep, you receive some... Um, uh, alarm to, to, to get you on track, all that kind of. So once you activate the camera, then they are, you can get back to all the, all the activities we talked about it before, and all that could be activated. Because now you can picture the person, you can look at uh, the eye contact, and you can do a lot of things about it. This extreme, but this analytics could be very helpful in the future. So again, it, it looks overwhelming, but we don't have to do all that. This, this is done automatically, and the statistics is already there, and it could be used whenever it's needed. And this is, again, get back to the 24-hour uh, uh, response um, uh, for the students. Students could ask the book questions, um, writing a question, right, typing a question. Of course, there is a huge amount of natural language processing here, taking the question, understand it, and retrieve the right text, or, or try to... Uh, go even more than this if you ask the the, uh, the book to compare, let's say, between uh, uh, A and Z uh, technologies or or whatever, then all this text could be shuffled up and, and you get an answer to that. So, or it could be a basic question that the book basically just point to the right uh, uh, to the right uh, place and um, uh, and write text and provide it to the student. All right. So another thing which is very important, which is student performance. We are working in, a, in, in this project at the moment, and uh, we're learning a lot along the way. So in fact, we already started experimenting this, uh, uh, looking at student performance, and in fact, detecting a student at risk early on, and how we can come up with remedial actions uh, to be taken. So we can have all the students' related uh, data, uh, in our case, we try to get as, ma as much as possible, uh, many uh, sections of data. Not only that, uh, we get even high school uh, data, some of the personal uh, data, uh, uh, some of the, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, physiological uh, uh, data. There are many we try to collect and we try to analyze. So what we do here, we use uh, machine learning, which is uh, the heart of of uh, AI in order to look for uh, possibilities of looking at or identifying student at risk. This is very interesting because you want to identify the student at risk early on. It's not like um, uh, by the end of the course, like what we do now, you finish your course, then you send your all your uh, grades to, the, uh, uh, to be evaluated and uh, for the report of the course to be generated then you realize there are a lot of things that would have been fixed. And here we are determined to do this as early as possible. So identifying a student at risk is very important. And the only thing is, we need to collect the right data, and then anytime you should figure out the use of, of uh, machine learning and detect what's the next uh, assessment, uh, uh, the performance of the next assessment right away, and what's the ultimate um, uh, uh, grade the student will graduate uh, by at the end or score, things like that. So it's not necessary to be 100% accurate, but it will give you an indication that there is a problem or not. And we tested this, and uh, it works really uh, well in our case. And not only this, we, we just published recently a paper using uh, uh, model, uh, using rule-based model here. Uh, this is a real uh, student data, and you can look at the red uh, highlights here, where the students started to uh, have some problems, and whether this problem is taking, uh, um, you know, is consistent or is just one test or one, um, uh, you know, maybe uh, evaluation measures that then the student get back in track again, and which students is really need uh, uh, action and what that action would be. So 
in our data, we also you know align each and every uh, uh, questions to the learning outcome. So if the student have any fault in any question, we can know straight away what kind of knowledge or activities or skills requires uh, to, to put the student back in track again. And uh, in this case, I will, I will show how we do that in, in the next slide. But here we use rule base and, and uh, uh, the instructor can, could set a threshold that you'd like the students uh, above that threshold. And, and, and uh, whenever there is a problem, then uh, uh, the instructor could be interfered. And uh, another thing is we are using this knowledge to feed into our learning system, which is the machine learning system here. To, in this case, the machine will learn from each and every test and ev each and every homework the student do, and every time update the model in order to improve even the learning process. The more you add to the model, the more it gets even better because you, you have enough uh, uh, evidence or attributes of or uh, predictors of how the students would perform at the end. And then we can have better uh, uh, vision of uh, how the uh, course will go and what the, uh, the level of success of the students. Also, we have a lot to do, right, in terms of assessment. I remember three years or four years back, uh, we developed a solution that you can simply, uh, if you finish a course, you can just scan all your document put it in a folder, and the assessment will be generated automatically. Um, it's a dream for us, right? Uh, we know how painful this process is. And uh, there are many uh, technologies that could actually help in this. And in fact, we're working on this uh, at the moment. Uh, to, uh, to, if we can take this to be automated, that would be a beautiful thing for, for all of us. So basically, um, I'm just giving examples of some of my uh, questions here. You know, uh, we develop a, a solution that takes questions and uh, uh, from the questions, map them directly to the uh, appropriate uh, course learning outcome and tell you how much uh, this question related to the outcome. This is basically what we used to do uh, uh, in our, uh, uh, you know, for whatever course you teach. And you need, of course, uh, to do this manually, looking at your questions, or at least remember the outcome when you uh, write your questions. You know, this is. Uh, uh, you know, going to contribute to that outcome. We have no clue how much it will contribute, and I don't think uh, somebody will know that. But at least here, using uh, 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 natural language processing, in this case, we take not only wording, but we take the semantic meaning, and we try to compare the two and find the level of, of, uh, uh, of match between uh, the two in terms of uh, knowledge and in terms of uh, uh, wording. So we tested this, and we find it, it works really fine. We do a lot of um, uh, course outcome mapping to program outcome and things like that. And every time we do any changes to course outcome, we have to redo the whole thing again. And uh, not only that, I remember when I used to be a department chair, we have meeting to do this alignment, let's say course outcome to program learning outcome. And you know, it's a, a, most of you know how painful this process is. The funny thing is, every time we meet, we can have different alignment because it's, it's very difficult to, um, uh, to determine exactly how much this particular outcome contributes to that particular uh, uh, program outcome. So it's subjective overall, but we did an experiment uh, work and, and we had a, uh, the whole department um, agree on, on, uh, on some mapping between course outcomes and program learning outcomes. And we use the system, uh, we design an AI solution to do this. And we, are be, and we were able to detect really, uh, or to get uh, um, results which is really encouraging. Not only, uh, only you know, it's, it's close to what we did in our meeting, but also we detected some of the missing links. Then when we revised back, we, this is actually makes sense. We missed it out. So the, the, it's not about replacing us here, but this is, this is another layer of, of helping us. And we can just do this and verify what we have, or other way around, we can verify, we do it and verify it using the technology. So now at least exams are, are online and, and easy to, to look at 
all the mapping, look at the uh, scores that you put in your um, uh, uh, Blackboard, and do the whole assessment without being uh, involved. When we started this, we had to design learning system that look at even handwritten to get from, you know, uh, uh, recognize your handwritten and get it into a digital format and then use it for, uh, uh, for the assessment at the end for the, you know, the report generated for the course. So there are a lot of work to be uh, done in here, but as I mentioned, the technology existed, it's just right, uh, using it in the right context and do the right testing until we are satisfied this is actually could help us in a way. So, in conclusion, what I would like to say here is, so we know that we teach or one-to-one -one teaching uh, is, is the best way we could do it, at least for our generation who experienced this. For new generation, by the way, they have different perspectives. But for us, we understand this is the best way. And I agree um, from the same generation, and I agree that's the best way we could uh, uh, do uh, teaching and learning. But there is a few things that we have uh, to understand here. The fourth uh, level of, um, of help that uh, we discuss in this uh, presentation quickly, if it's integrated in a right way, then our work will be optimized. We will have time to do much, uh, uh, you know, for a lot of uh, additional improvement in the course, maybe, instead of me tangling on, on, on assessment or, or, or looking at uh, attendance or things like that. So, it's not about the robot replacing us, but rather uh, working with us. And at the end, let's leverage the best attributes that we can get out of the machine and out of the academician. So, this is, will uh, be a great benefit for, for our students.